It was actually Muhammad Hicham who brought me out of atheism. Go to chapter 2, verse 230 of the Quran. It's going to talk about when you divorce a woman. Chapter 2, verse 230. Uh, and if he has divorced her for the third time, then she is not lawful to him afterwards until after she... She marries a husband other than him, and if the latter husband divorces her or dies, there is no blame upon the woman and her former husband for returning to each other. If they think, think that they can keep within the limits of Allah, these are the limits of Allah, which she makes clear to people who know. Okay, so notice, if I divorce my wife, the only way I can take her back, if she goes marry someone else and has sex with him, and he divorces her or he dies, then I can take her back, right? Reread and see yes. that's what it's saying. The one who makes my former wife lawful for me is called muhallal. That's a technical term, muhallal. So notice, if I divorce my wife. She's got to remarry and have sex and be divorced or that husband die for me to take her back. Otherwise, I can't take her back, right? Yes. Okay, now go to Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 to 4. If a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house. And if after she leaves his house, she becomes the wife of another man and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house. Or if he dies, then her first husband who divorced her is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. That would be detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Do not bring sin upon the land so can uh, I ask upon you a question? The land, the Lord. Why is your God Allah doing what is disgusting to the God of Moses? Did you see the contradiction? The God of Moses says, if I divorce my wife, she marries another, and he divorces or dies, I better not take her back. That's going to defile the land. The God of Muhammad says, hey, if I divorce my wife, she better get married and have sex in order for me to take her back. So mm -hmm. why is your God contradicting the God of Moses? I never noticed that. I'm going to give you another one. Go to chapter 4, verse 24, and then I'll wrap things up because I don't want to overwhelm you. Go to chapter 4, verse 24 of the Quran, Quran Surah An nisa chapter 4, verse 24. Also forbidden are married women except female captives in your possession. This is Allah's commandment to you. Okay, Lawful to you. Okay, hold on. Read that again slowly. Just the first part I need you to read. One more time. Also forbidden are married women except female captives in your possession. So wait. Married women are forbidden for you to have sex with, right? Except female captives. Oh, yeah. so if I take a female captive, even though she's married, your God is saying I can have sex with her, right? Yes. Okay, now, I'm going to read the hadith. Sunan Abu Dawood, I just gave you the link. I posted it in the Skype, and I posted it here. This is Sahih narration. Sheikh al-Albani. Let me read to you the historical context. Are you ready? Yeah. Sunan Abu Dawood, in English, it's 2150. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri said, The Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Autas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captains because of their pagan husbands. So they're still married. Their husbands were there taken captive. So they didn't want to have sex because they're embarrassed. So Allah, the exalted, sent down the chronic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possess. This is to say they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. So your God says to Muhammad, hey, you take a woman captive in war and she's married, you can have sex with her. She's your property. doesn't matter her husband's alive. Then you can sell them off. Now, let me be, ask you an honest question. If the Muslims were to attack us today, just let's say hypothetically, whatever your view of jihad is, doesn't matter, just for this argument. The Muslims attack your city, take you and your wife captive, and the Muslim man has sex with your wife. Number one, would your wife be okay with it? Number two, would you be okay with it? No. Of course not. But this is what your God has sanctioned, and he never abrogated it. Now, let me compare that with the God of Moses. Go to now Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. A law given 2,200 years before your prophet. Look what the true God tells Moses about women who have taken captive. When you go out to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God gives them into your hand, and you take them captive, and you see what among the captives a beautiful woman, and you desire to take her to be your wife, and you bring her home to your house, she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall take off the clothes in which she was captured, and shall remain in your house and lament her father and her mother a full month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband. Wait, wait. And she Can shall... you just have sex with her, or you must then marry her and be her husband? You must be her husband. And yeah. she will be your wife. Yeah. Now finish it. But if you no longer delight in her, you shall let her go where she wants, but you shall not sell her for money. Nor shall you treat her as a slave, since you have humiliated her. So wait, 
What do you do for her? You should marry her. And then if you dislike her and you divorce her and shaming her by divorcing her, do you then sell her like property, like chattel, or you let her go free? You would let her go free. So why is the law of Moses superior to the law of your God when Moses' God said, you cannot rape captive women, especially married. If there's a woman that you've taken captive, you give her time to mourn, let her shave her head and pair nails because that will also give her time to mourn because that's a sign of mourning, but it does something else. In case you were lusting for her, when she shaves her head, then if it was lust, that lust will die out and you're going to leave her alone. But if you really loved her, then even with her head shaved, you'll still desire her, but you give her a full month, you don't touch her sexually. Then you marry her and you have sex with her. But if you divorce her, you send her out. Why is this law superior to the law of your God and prophet? When your God and prophet said, you can take a married captive woman and have sex with her and then sell her off. And can I just read the Quranic verse again? Go ahead. And just, I gave you the link to the, the hadith, the context. So read it one more time. Compare the true God of Moses with your God. Read chapter 4, verse 24. Also forbidden all married women except female captives in your possession. Wow. Wait. So here it says, if there's a married woman, you can't touch her except she's a female captive. You want me to read the hadith again? Yes. Okay. Let me give you the link in case you missed it the first time. Here's the hadith. Would, they, would you not have to marry? Uh, no. In the no. Uh oh. So it's right here, the hadith. I'm telling you, no. You can have sex with her and then you can sell her off. Here, let me read it again. Abu Sayyid al Khudri. I gave you the link in the Skype comment section. For the rest of you, I put it in, in the chat. Abu Sayyid al Khudri, and it's Sahih, it's sound, al Albani. It's narrated by multiple hadith collectors. It's not just him. Abu Sayyid al Khudri said, The Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Altas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions, Sahaba of the Apostle of Allah, were reluctant to have relations. Doesn't say marriage. Have sex. Relations. That's the word. With the female captains because of their pagan husbands. So Allah the Exalted sent down the chronic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you. And the context is not about who you can't have sex with. Not that about marriage. If you read verse 23. Okay, now let me read again. And Allah sent down the chronic verse. All married women are forbidden unto you. Save those whom your right hands possess. That is to say, they are lawful for them. When they complete their waiting period. Make sure they're not pregnant. And if they're not pregnant, you can go into them. Doesn't say marry them. You can have relations with them. And then you can do what you want with them. Sell them or keep them. And the husbands are still alive. What kind of God does this? Because now you have two problems. Number one, he's sanctioning adultery. Number two, for all intents and purposes, it's rape. Because I want you to convince me. Convince me a woman who's married, whose husband is still alive, taken captive, would voluntarily, willfully want to have sex with her captor. Any sane woman would do that? If her husband's still alive? Yeah, it's right there. It says in front of the pagan husbands. Uh, probably not. Come on, man. Any decent woman who's just been attacked and had family relatives or whatever killed, and a man jumps on her wants to have sex with her, she says, oh, yeah, oh, I'm so excited. I was waiting. No decent moral woman would want to have sex and there's nothing in the quran or in the hadith that says you got to get her permission because she belongs to you she is your position the literal arabic isn't female captive it's those that your right hands possess that's the arabic that's why in the hadith notice how it's translated let me read it one more time so allah exalted sent down the chronic verse and all married women are forbidden unto you save those whom your right hand possess that is an arabic idiom meaning that which you own and possess so here, this woman, you own her. That means she has no say-so in the matter. And you're okay with this? Uh. Exactly. My friend, you made a big mistake leaving atheism for Islam. Keep seeking the face of God. Keep watching my videos. Watch Christian Prince as well. And David Wood, watch these videos. And Lord willing, call me tomorrow. We'll talk more because I gave you too much information and I want to blow you away.